I'm going to show you how to edit STL files in Fusion 360. So uh, STL files are really good for 3D printing. However, as they are a mesh, they're hard to edit. And you may come across some models that you want to make some small changes to, such as maybe change the size of a hole to accept a different size magnet or something like that. And uh, this, this poses a challenge as you don't have access to the original geometry. All right, so I'm just going to open up Fusion 360 here. And the first thing to do is you can insert the STL file as a mesh. So you go to the insert command, select insert mesh, find an STL file. So I'll just bring in a file here. So this helmet here, and then we'll accept the location. So this looks pretty good. If you know, if you twist it around, you can see some strange looking faces on here. And that's just a really a rendering artifact because you look at the edges, the boundary is still pretty good. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we have to convert it to a B rep or a boundary representation. And that's because if you try to do something like say cut a hole in this, I'll just do it real quick. So I'll, I'll make a sketch on one of the faces here, maybe this bottom plane and just Try to make a big circle. Select that circle and then extrude that and just try to extrude through here and maybe like cut it. So I wanna go cut and you'll notice that there's no geometry here to intersect with because there's no actual boundary. It's just the mesh file at this point. All right, so I'm just gonna undo that sketch. And all right, so to convert this to a, a boundary file or a B-rep file, the first thing you have to do is turn off these this history. So you come down here to this gear button and you say, do not capture design history. And so when, that, when you do that, you'll notice you get some other more options such as and I'll do that here, so I'll say continue. You get this mesh tools, but also in the salad function, you get uh, more options in the modify button. You get this mesh option down here and this mesh to B rep, and that's what we're looking for. So you click that, and then if you try to apply this to a model and hit okay, uh, it gives you an error many times uh, for many models, and this says, because the, the facets on this model is, like there's 52,000, versions. And so if you look up on Fusion's uh, web, web page and you look in their documentation, you'll see in converting to a B rep from a mesh, you'll see there's a limitation of it has to have 10,000 facets or less. And so that's all right. We can, we can take care of that problem. So if you go to the mesh command, You'll, under modify, you can see this option called reduce. So what this does is just reduce the number of um, kind of triangles and facets in the model. So I, so I hit the reduce option and then I go and select the whole thing by selecting this mesh body here. Uh, adaptive is fine. Uh, and then this is a then you have to change this density. So if you hit it at one, it'll it'll not reduce it at all. If you go to zero, there's really nothing left. Um, so we know at 1.0 is the whole 50,000 facets and we really want to get it around 10,000. So we need to reduce it down uh, by about 20%, down to 20% of its original um, density. So I just scroll it down just a little less than 20%. So there's 18.4%. Um, the one option you really want to check is this preserve boundaries. So that preserves all the edges uh, and especially the flat regions. So make sure that is checked and then hit, hit OK. All right, so when you do that now, the if you spin around your model, you'll see it really does not look good. It looks much worse. Um, don't fear yet. If you also notice on the edges, you can still see there's like flat edges are flat. And in general, most of the um, shape is still retained. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the solid section, and go to modify, go to mesh, 
and then we'll go to mesh to uh, b-rep and we'll select this mesh body here and then hit OK. And then once that happens, it takes a few seconds usually, we'll get a new body here and it'll um, deselect the mesh body. And if you look at this one, it is uh, like the flat areas are much cleaner and the curved sections. You can, you can see some of these uh, triangle facets in here um, because it, it did, we did reduce it quite a bit. But when you 3D print, you really can't see those. So it's not too big of a deal. On the flat zones, you also notice there are quite a few facets still there, even though it is mostly flat. Um, I've been playing around with FreeCAD some, and I did notice that it has a nice simplify feature that actually makes flat zones to be all kind of one face, which is pretty nice for this, this function. Um, but anyways, um, now we're able to edit this is because it's a body uh, object. And so at this point, we we'll want to re-enable kind of the, the history. And so you do that by right clicking on your, your main uh, root project in, in the browser. And then you go all the way to the bottom and say capture design history. So you turn that back on and it'll enable the, the timeline at the bottom. And now we can do things like say we want to change this hole to be a different size for a different size magnet. You can now start sketching here. So we'll just sketch, uh, we'll just pick one of these facets as our plane. Uh, I put hit C for circle. And I'm just going to draw a circle kind of in this, this area. Finish the sketch, but now I can grab that circle, hit shift to, to make the whole circle. And then I'm going to hit E for extrude. And then I'll just extrude down some ways. And we don't want to cut here. We want to join and hit OK. And now you can see we filled in that hole. And likewise, we can do the same thing with uh, making a hole. So I just do the same thing. I start a new sketch, select an area on that plane, create a new circle. So if I want to put like a six, six millimeter magnet. So maybe I'll just do 6.2 for a little bit of tolerance so it can fit. Hit enter. Uh, finish that sketch. I select the sketch. Select because now we have all those facets in there. So sometimes you have to shift select and make sure you get the whole section. Hit E for extrude. And then say we want to go extrude maybe negative 2.2 millimeters because maybe you have a six by two millimeter magnet and just say cut and hit okay. And now you can see we've changed the size of that hole on this model. And then you can export it like normal using the tools make button. And you can select that and then re-export it as an STL file again for 3D printing. And you've changed that model hole. So that, so that works pretty well. Um, sometimes I have noticed in some models, oops, I'll just cancel this. Um, for like, say, this is doing the whole character here. So I had noticed sometimes when you start extruding and making cuts, you'll get a bunch of odd, like artifacts. So I'm going back in history here, and you can see, like in these corners, I get all these facets that stick up that I didn't really want. Um, so you can just highlight them all and then just delete them manually. And then once once they're all gone, um, the model exports well and usually slices and prints just fine. So anyways, that's how I uh, make small edits. And uh, you can edit SDL files if you're just looking to kind of sculpt it in many other files or many other programs such as mix, Mesh Mixer and things like that. But these are more for like engineering type designs, you want to put specific size holes or um, do more kind of parametric changes instead of instead of a uh, kind of a sculpting type changes. Uh, anyways, that's how I do it and I uh, hope this helped.